What's up guys, Manny from Motor Million. We got the R1M. We're gonna give it more grip, but we're not changing the suspension nor the tires. Let me see if you can guess what it is. I don't know if you guys guessed it correctly, but when I said grip, I meant grip on the foot pegs. We're gonna be installing some Gilly Sooling rear sets on the bike. It's something that I really look for on a bike is to have grippier foot pegs. The stock ones aren't the best when it comes to that, and it gives you a lot of confidence when you're riding the bike speed on the street or the track. And don't forget, you're supposed to be keeping your weight on your legs when you're riding and not have anything on your arms. Your arms should be loose. And having grippier foot pegs really allows you to put your weight on those foot pegs. But also, I don't know if you guys heard this news, Jerry Campisi is coming to Miami to visit us. And I think we're gonna be doing some riding. That's why I just wanted to quickly change the rear sets on our R1M so that we could enjoy just a little more because this bike's really special. Here's our box, let's cut this open. There are no retakes of this, guys, because I just cut the box open. So you get to see exactly how they come. This is our shifter peg, I believe. Our shift peg, shift lever, whatever you call it. These are some of the bolts and nuts, the hardware. This is one of the heel guards and a red. I don't remember this being on there, but we'll see what this is. We have our manual. And in here, we have our beautiful rear sets. Let's see which side this is. This is the brake side, I could already tell. They're really beautiful. If you guys remember, we had this on our previous R1M that unfortunately got stolen. And on the last 60th anniversary build, we put the light tech resets. I wanted to go with these Gillies back on this bike. And we're not gonna change the master cylinder, but eventually we'll do that on this bike as well. And this is our other rear set. I think they've changed some design elements on it. There is more of a laser etching on it, but basically these are, these are the rear sets. The, the shifter side comes almost assembled, so this is really easy to replace. On the brake side, we're gonna have to transfer some stuff over from the stock foot pegs, and it'll be on the instructions right here. But as I say, less talking, more working. Let's get these on the bike. So I'm gonna start with the easy side, and that is the shifter side basically a six millimeter Allen. The stock one is off. And what I like to do is first to try to put them over one another, just to see the angle of the rear sets to give it, get an idea of how I'm gonna adjust it. Okay, so now we know that we're gonna have to, when we're adjusting, we're gonna have to bring this down to at least start off where the stock location was. And once we have it on there, we'll know how to fit it to the rider. So in this case, it would be me. And uh, that's one of the benefits of using an adjustable rear sets is that you could do the ergonomics of the bike however you like it. We got a pack of hardware. Six mil. Now that we have the rear sets on, I'm gonna change the shift lever, and I believe I gotta remove the belly pan for that. I'm just gonna raise the bike up and then get to it and then change that shift lever. And if you guys have been following along with the R1M series, you know that this is my Ducati bolt that I used on it. Just because I had made a comment and said this bike is the Ducati of Japan and some people got really tipped off by that comment. I've said it before and I'll say it again, that was a compliment. There you go, that was easy. The belly pan is off. And you can be sure that we're actually gonna change the quick shifter on the bike. I wanna install the Cordona quick shifter just to see 
the difference, but I don't want to change it just yet because I want to get more miles on the bike. I haven't been able to ride this bike since uh, I've been so busy, but I think uh, I want to familiarize myself with the quick shifter that's on it from the factory. That way I could give an honest assessment of if it's worth it or not, or if there's any improvements by switching to a Cordona. On other bikes like the Ducatis, they've been extremely well and they really improve the, the feel of the shifting and they, Ducatis are notorious for their quick shifters. Well, up until the revision that they did to 22. But I think we'll give this a shot on the, on the R1M and see if we can see any kind of differences on there. So we have our shift lever here. I have the M8 by 55 bolt in our red piece. That's here, the cone piece. We have a little bushing that goes first. And then according to instructions, we're using both of these spacers. I don't think it matters on which one goes first. They're saying eight first and 10 the second. And also the factory piece had Loctite on this. I'm gonna put Loctite on your rear sets. If you have any moving pieces, I would suggest putting Loctite because especially if it had it from the factory on there so that you know that it's not gonna come loose when riding I see it and hear it all the time that people buy rear sets, they install it or have it installed and they're riding and they lose a piece just because they didn't Loctite it. So guys, I have the shift lever off. Instructions say to go for the standard shift to use the bolt hole that says S on it. There's another one that says F. It doesn't say what it is, but that basically will give you uh, the height of the shifter. So I think if you don't have it at the right height, you could try the other bolt hole, but just for the sake of the following the instructions, I'm gonna use that bolt hold up S. And remember the instructions are asking for this to be mounted from behind on the stock foot peg. It was this way, but they want you to go from the back of it. On the brake side, I have a rag because when you take this off, you got to take the master cylinder off and transfer onto the new one. And I don't want to scratch the frame, but let's start off by taking this, these bolts off. There we go. Now I'm gonna go look at my instructions, grab the Geely's rear sets, see what we gotta do to install it. And I believe there's a measurement that we gotta take for the brake light. It says uh, that we gotta measure something here. So I'm gonna get my calipers as well. So we have about 7.39. I'm gonna install it like this at 7.3 or four millimeters. And we'll do the fine adjustments after. And that's all for the actuation of your brake light. This is just a mechanical switch that Yamaha has on there. Perfect, so now you'll see when you pull the, or when you step on your brake lever, this pulls this switch here and your brake lights come on. And now we can flip it around. There we go, that's in place. And now we don't have our bracket for the exhaust since we're running the World Superbike exhaust on this. And if you guys are new to the channel, go check out our video because this bike has a special exhaust. It might look like the Evolution. This is not the Evolution system. This is the World Superbike spec exhaust for the Super Stock series that we installed it. That's why, if you haven't noticed, this bracket is going to the rear passenger seat peg mounts. Now that both bolts are on, I could tighten these massive cylinder bolts. There's 10 Newton meters for those, which is not crazy tight. We're gonna use a longer bolt that I mentioned. This one right here, this is very close to the other ones. It's just five mils longer and it holds the 
carbon heel guard in place. So we have a dilemma here since again that this bike has been a little different than what's out there. Your exhaust bracket is also held on by this and this threads into the exhaust bracket where this goes through the rear set and the heel guard and in the back the exhaust bracket is threaded. On this bike, as I mentioned, we don't have that exhaust bracket. What I'm going to do is I'm going to try to a, a nut for this so that we could tighten it from behind so that our rear set is secure. I believe this is done. What you want to make sure is that there's no binding when you're pressing down. Now is the time to figure all that out. And one other thing that this is very, very, very important, especially if you're running composite wheels, make sure that you have no brake drag because the minute your brake is dragging, it's generating heat and it's going to cause issues like bearing issues or wearing your rear brakes. But also if you're on composite wheels, like carbon fiber wheels, they do not like heat and that's when you see some of the failures. Almost all the failures online that I've seen of carbon fiber wheels other than some brands that are out there that I'm not going to mention of the quality problems they have but stuff like the BSDs that I've seen that have had issues. It's almost always has been caused by the rear brake drag and that heat going through the wheel. So if your rear brake is dragging that it's not moving freely like this most rear sets have a adjustment where there's a bolt that will push your brake lever down or up. This particular one doesn't have it just because of the way that it's machined and it's meant to be used with the stock master or any other master that you run. You have to make sure that the rod length is set correctly, that it's not putting any pressure on it. And you see there's a little bit of a free play here. And that free play is right before that brake master cylinder gets actuated. And if you have to change it on the R1s, all you do is you take this nut off, you loosen it, you spin it, and that gives you that adjustment for the foot lever that you need. So now we have our key in place, and we wanna check the brake lights to make sure it's working. And it's working beautifully. Again, I wanna check the brake drag. You got no brake drag and we're good. So now we can put the belly pan on, we'll lower the bike, I'll get on it, I'll see what the adjustments are like, if it's to my liking and if we have to adjust it to the ergonomics that I would prefer to have it, we'll do all the adjustments on the bike. sure that we're not hitting the carbon or anything like that and it's actually working properly. Let me get on the bike real quick. I believe the brake light is coming on. Perfect. This is functioning right. There's no interference whatsoever and uh, I usually ride with riding boots all the time. So with regular shoes it feels okay but once I take it for a spin I'll be able to tell if, uh, if all is good with the riding boots. We kind of checked with the stock rear sets to see where the position was. This is a little further back and higher, I believe. But when you're sitting on the bike, it fits perfect. And if you saw my knees, inside of my knees were hugging the side of the tank perfectly, which is kind of where you want your knees to be. Or if you have any other preference, you could play around with the rear sets to get it done. And that's it, guys. The rear sets are on, that was quick and easy. They look great, they feel great, especially when I'm sitting on the bike, I could report to you guys that these are a lot grippier and just by touching it, you know, I, I almost feel like I'm gonna cut my hands. Speaking of stuff that's tactile on the bike that you touch and feel that makes a big difference when you ride, we're gonna be digging through the front end of this bike. Up next with the R1M is gonna be the handlebar setup, which is gonna be the clip-ons, the buttons, the upper triple and the nut. But my OCD is not going to allow this reservoir to be in here. You could expect us on a later episode. I don't know when, but we will definitely get rid of this reservoir and use our Gale Speed Master Cylinder with the integrated reservoir on it. And if you picked up on the video, Jerry Campisi is coming into town. Today we're going to receive two of his bikes and look out for those episodes where we take him for a ride, 
Jared will take some of our Motor Million bikes for a ride. And if I'm lucky enough, I'm gonna bring Jared in here so that we can wrench on some of his bikes. If you liked the video, please give it a thumbs up. If you have any questions or comments, please leave them down below. Until next time, guys, have a good one. <laughs>